Good morning. <laughs> How's the early birds? Hey, waiting in the line there to get in. <laughs> While um, you're joining, I'm just going to do a few breaths because. Mommy's nervous, but I heard that nerves and excitement is the same. So mommy's very excited. <laughs> I'm just going to do a few breaths. If you want to breathe with me, I'm going to do three breaths because just to calm. Inhale. And ex. In. And ex. This feels like a way bigger deal than it should be, you know? <laughs> <Whew>. Morning. <laughs> I have missed talking to you, I'll tell you that much. I have missed you a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, I have been gifted with load shedding. So I know that I do have internet currently, but if for some reason it starts freaking out, it is what it is, we'll reschedule. Um, I don't expect to take a lot of your time. And um, I don't know, I'm feeling so emotional. <laughs> I've purposefully asked for no one to be with me this morning just because I wanted to just be real and raw. I don't want to be, I don't want to be led in a way by my agent or my publicist or my lawyer. I don't want to be led in a way by East Coast. I just wanted this between you and me. And not because I think I'm super important and because we should do this, but because I just feel like what I've just experienced, um, we all actually, to some degree in our lives, experience and don't feel like we have a place to speak up. Or we don't feel like we have a, a right to speak up. And I want to actually start this by saying that as I do this, I have so much love for East Coast Radio and my bosses and my colleagues um, it was like really some of the best times of my life. So um, I did get a, an email at about 10 o'clock last night, um, well, my, my lawyer did at least, just saying we know that Kerry is going live and just basically maybe a little bit of an undercover threat. But to those of you who are in the building that are listening, this is not going to be a hate on you at all, I promise you. Okay. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Okay. Ah, yeah. I've got a coffee in a jar. I don't know, this morning I was all over the place. Lots of water. I do have my journal just because um, I keep it close when I'm nervous. But um, like I said, this is not about um, trying to make my story anything. I just felt like for the last seven years, we have been talking to each other. And then all of a sudden, there was this radio silence and no one knew what had happened. And I, I kept quiet purely just, I wasn't necessarily asked to, I kept quiet because I thought it was the right thing to do. I thought I wanted to have grace. I wanted us to go through a period where we would eventually go to mediation and we had mediation two days ago and we did not come to a deal. Hence why I'm now talking to you. So I just wanted to give you a very brief, um, uh, background on on my history and radio again promises won't be long and I do have my phone with me so I'm going to try and look at comments as we're going because I'm not reading all the comments right now but um, I when I was in standard nine so grade 11 I did my work experience at East Coast Radio like this is why I'm saying to you I love the brand <laughs> like I'm just heartbroken you know I feel like I love that brand and in standard nine Oh, I wish I wasn't crying. Sorry. <laughs> Instead of nine, I did my work experience at East Coast because that for me has always been the epitome of where I wanted to be in radio. And um, I was lucky enough to be trained by the wonderful men, <laughs> there were men, at Red Cap Radio, um, Dave Yap and Marcel Sapé or Fat Jam. And I was on air at Red Cap Radio for a few years, and one of the best things that David ever said to me was, please don't ever sound different on air than you do off air, because it's very weird when he's like, and this is Kerry Miller, you're listening to Rihanna, that's diamonds, you know, and we all kind of start like that. And he said to me, just don't do that. And I think that was the, 
the best thing that's ever happened because the one thing that's come out you know, as I've now left radio is that, you know, Kerry, you were the same on air as you were off air. And Kerry, it's so nice that when, you know, and please, I also understand that I'm not liked by everyone. I just want to put that out there. Um, I'm not an idiot. I, I'm very aware that you can't have a million listeners and everyone's like, I think you're so nice. But that's the point of putting yourself out there is that everyone gets to have an opinion. And whether you have an opinion, whatever the opinion is, it's your opinion to have. So, but it does definitely help if you are the same on air as you are off air. I then went to Cape Town where my first on air FM job was at KFM. Uh, KFM. Had a cool run there as well. I was four years there and I was on the drive show with Lee Downs. That was very cool. It was a lot of fun. So drive, same as where Stacey and Jay Spoo are. It's the afternoon. It's nice because you can sleep in. I'm not going to lie. Um, then I went over to Heart FM, and Heart FM was just whew, something about that place as well. I think because of the listeners, um, also was so raw and real. <laughs> Flip. <laughs> and why I'm telling you this little history is because when I was working at Heart FM, I was speaking to to people. So at KFM, for example, you have people maybe with a bit. Uh, not, not saying more money, but just like your Alessima is a bit higher, whatever. And at Heart FM, I remember once a woman phoning and saying that her and her kids were listening from the lounge. I was working with Sugar Nick Feinberg. And the kids hadn't gone to school because there was gang warfare going on outside. And I remember thinking that they were listening to us and hiding in their lounge, you know. And it just, it wasn't about buy this, sell this. All of a sudden, I was so aware of the connection we have with people. I then did my yoga teacher training that same year, so now we're in 2015. And my yoga teacher training just also made me see the, the value my voice has. When you stand in front of a group of people and you say, lift your arms, and 30 people lift their arms, and all of a sudden I realized that every time I told someone to eat this product, buy that thing, go to that place, they trusted me and they listened. And I left heart and just started teaching yoga for a while because I feel like I needed to just reconnect a little bit with what does my voice mean to me? If, if I'm going to use my voice and people are going to listen, surely I need to be more responsible with what I say. For me, no judgment on anyone else. I then moved to Durban. I took an offer for just a, like a weekend show at East Coast. I was obviously so excited and very happy to be um, back on air. I feel like I'm going to have to get a tissue soon, so if I do run away, um, I'm, I'm going to keep sniffing. Let me do it right now, actually. Um, you, can, you can look how I dress. This is my power dress for today. Um, All right, so I took the, the job at East Coast and I was doing weekends and I was there very briefly on weekends before I was offered to stand in on breakfast. Now, if you understand radio, breakfast is your flagship show. Flagship meaning it's your number one, it's where you wanna be. And as a woman to co-host a breakfast show, it doesn't really happen. And it was and still is one of my proudest achievements. At the time, Natara was pregnant, hence why she was off the show, and I was standing in for her. And again, I did it with, I was so excited to do it. Um, some of you will remember the first show when I came in in pajamas. So I was already at the studio, just by the way. Um, everyone said, I remember the day you came in pajamas. I didn't race from home. We knew, we knew that I was going to be on the show, um, and maybe call it a stunt or... Call it just adding some flavor, you know, like with your kids at the parties, you just add some flavor. We were adding some flavor. I was really in pajamas, that is how I worked that day, um, but I didn't race from home. I was already there. And um, when they offered me permanent on the show, I first, and this is important for me to tell you because I first chatted to Natara and just said to her, I, obviously this, she knows what's happening, and is it okay? because I don't want to take a woman's job who's just had a baby, like that's rough. She was like, no, I'm a news, I'm news, I want to be news. And that's how Darren, Kerry and Sky started. Okay, so now we're caught up. Let me see in the comments, hi everyone. Okay, oh, hello. So, Darren, Kerry and Sky worked. Why did we work? Because Darren, so let's just say water. 
Darren likes only cold water. Kerry likes only boiling water. And Sky likes it in the middle. And that's why it worked. Because we were able to represent so many different people at once. Because Darren and Kerry were always the opposite side of the scale. Okay, you're starting to get where I'm going. So we had Darren say, yes, I love blue. Kerry says, no, I don't like blue. And Sky's like, I don't mind. So we had this beautiful, call it a, a tripod, I think we were called a lot. Um, we, and it just worked. And a lot of the time for a show like that to work, you do obviously get some tension and, and some things. And I'm going to right now tell you to your face, and if you want to ask my siblings or my parents, I can be difficult, I know that. I'm a, an Aries woman. Um, I, have, I have a tongue, I'm not afraid to use it. I know, wait, that sounded very weird. I don't mean it like that. I mean like uh, I speak and sometimes I speak harshly. And um, so this is not a, oh, I'm so amazing. I, no, no, no. I'm saying, but I'm flipping good at my job. And you've got to be a strong woman who can speak up and be witty and say, you have to be in order to be the co-host of a breakfast show. So Darren and I, from the beginning, there was some like animosity, but it was maybe a bit more playful, I would say. Um, but they definitely uh, like a, ah, with us. And then what would happen is we would have a bit of a mm, and then a little while later it would just settle. Or we'd have a bit of a mm, and then it would settle again. But now this is all pre-COVID, remember. Then let's just fast forward. So Darren and I would have our fights. We'd have our fights, we'd be fine. Have our fights, we'd be fine. Sometimes we were, it would come across as a stunt. Sometimes it was a stunt. Other times it got real. But the point is, that's what radio is. You know, we're real with you. And then... Um, just before COVID happened, uh, Darren started dating his now wife and she and I were acquaintances and she even said to him, I'm not going to go on a date with you unless you're nice to Kerry. Uh, yes, a joke, but why I'm saying that is that's the only and first time he came over to my house with her. He had a candle and for a good few months, it was actually quite pleasant. Like the two of us were getting on and then COVID happened and I'm not sitting here saying Darren was right or wrong. I know that I went maybe a bit more hippie route with COVID. Um, I was like manifesting health and making sure I got vitamin D and I was, you know, taking zinc and all the things that were maybe seemed to be the other end of the spectrum. I know I'm not right. I'm just saying what I did. And Darren was like watching the numbers, following the science, double masking. And so we were just opposites. The thing is, when it's about do you like hot water or cold water? It's all fine. But when it's like, your actions may hurt my family, it's not funny anymore. And so we started actually going for like couples counseling. I was under the impression it was a psychologist, psychiatrist. Uh, that has come out that anyway, point is it was more like maybe coaching, but it was seen as counseling at the time. Like couples counseling, guys, for real. And every time we would go for couples counseling, it would uh, get a little bit better for a few days. Uh, or months even, and then it would come to a head again. And I just want to say that this is not, um, not because I'm not allowed to, but I just don't feel like this is the platform to say, and then he said, and then he said, it's not about that. Really, it's not. Um, it's not going to change anything, and it's not going to make me look nice. And, well, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. So over COVID, obviously it got a little bit worse, and it just got more and more... Personal, I think, is the way to say it. Now, to be in a woman, to be in a woman, to be a woman in a team of men is um, challenging. And I was very much part of the boys' club, and I was okay with that. I was a boyish girl. I laughed at the sexual innuendos, and I dropped an f bomb. I still do many times. Uh, I was like, fine. And then something happened, and I, honestly, I don't know one person who over COVID didn't have a complete shift of internal energy where it doesn't matter how much money you had, something in you was like, whew, so, you know, you, you were afraid for your life, you were afraid for the life of your family, you maybe lost loved ones, like it was a very hectic time, hectic time. And I don't know anyone who came out the other side of COVID the same person, you know, if you were lucky enough to come out the other side. I changed, man. And I think that's where things really went wrong is that 
You know when you've got a dog that sleeps in your bed and every night the dog jumps on your bed and that's fine and then one day you say you're not allowed on the bed anymore? I mean, is it the dog's fault? Not really. So that's what I'm saying here. I stepped more into my feminine. I stepped more into my feminine power. And all of a sudden I felt very uncomfortable in the boys club. And I felt bullied. Okay, I have to say that. I felt very bullied. I felt victimized, I felt picked on, I felt not heard. And you know like a roast, you know what a roast is? Uh, when you have someone and then you kind of make fun of them and a roast is funny and it is a joke, but it's based on fact. And every single morning I felt like I was part of a roast. And the one thing I think that got to me specifically was that my co-host is quite openly um, uh, atheist, right? Again, everyone to their own. But I don't want to have to defend the fact that I believe there's a God or that I, that I believe in energy or it just didn't feel right anymore. And every morning waking up, knowing that you're waking up early enough to see a sunrise or go to a yoga class or whatever, so lie next to your boyfriend and just cuddle. I was getting up and going to work and for the first time in my whole life work started to feel like work and that had never happened to me, not in my, next year would have been 20 years on radio. Not in my whole life had radio ever felt like work. And um, we recently had a, a change of leadership and when our new boss came in, um, I said to him, I am struggling and I don't know how much longer I can work with him. Anyway, um, that was the beginning of this year. And then we had our photo shoot for the new shows coming up. Obviously, we've done a whole new day. They, they, I still can't believe I'm not there. It's freaking crazy. Um, they've done a rebrand. And we had the photo shoot for that rebrand. And um, after that, uh, there was a weekend AKA died. And that show, the Monday, the 13th of February, we just, had a, we just didn't have a great show. Something happened in the studio where I said something to Darren. He replied to me in a way that I felt very disrespected. And after the show, it was suggested that me, him, and Sky sit together and sort it out, with Sky almost being asked to be like a mediator, really. And um, I'm sure that you guys at work are listening or watching, so Sky, bro, I love you, and I'm sorry, and I'm really... I'm really bummed I haven't heard from you. My heart is broken. <laughs> but I'm your child's godmother, so you can't ignore me forever. Um, and I just said on that day, I don't think it's appropriate for Sky to mediate for us. It's not him. Sky's not a fighter, you know. Anyway, that day I got suspended uh, for basically insubordination because I didn't stay and try and sort it out which I still would make the same decision now because when you're heated like that, what are you going to do? Put two dogs in a room that are fighting and say, what, fight, what, fight to the death, guys, come on. So anyway, that started my suspension. Uh, I was off air, uh, suspended no pay for two days. Then I phoned work and I said, I don't feel like I'm ready to come back because nothing's been resolved. It's going to be the same thing again. I'm going to go back to the same boys club. It's going to be the same situation. And I just feel like I'm not being heard here, guys. Anyway... That was the Saturday that I did um, East Coast Body Boot Camp. And uh, I love that event, by the way. And if you haven't done it, really, please go do it. It's a really beautiful soul event. But um, yeah, after that event, I then went away. My boyfriend's got a farm in Limpopo. And just a bit of a shout out to him, though. He's been like the most amazing support in the whole world. Um, and my family and all of you, actually. Uh, yeah, and then, so this is the situation. This is why we've come to this point. I contacted someone to say, uh, you know, I need some legal advice. She said, cool. Um, while this is happening, East Coast got an external investigator in just to see, did I have any backing of what I was saying about my environment being toxic and, and, and. And a woman came in and she did an external investigation where she spoke to me separately and the team separately and um, came back and said, yes, it is a very toxic environment. The relationship between the two of them is irreparable and they can't work together. 
and I was called in for a feedback meeting, which, which I was told I was going to hear what was going on and what, how we were going to move forward. And in the feedback meeting, and I, I think it's important to tell you this, they did say, Kerry, you need to take your part in this role. You know, like you also were very emotional and you stormed out and all the things. And I, I did, I did storm out the studio and I did cry. And so I am like, I'm taking my part in this really. I'm not pointing fingers. It just was uh, just two people that weren't working together, you know? And um, in that feedback meeting, when I was going to hear what they were going to do, they said, um, you're very good at what you do. You're a natural on radio. Um, basically, told me I was really good. But it's Darren's show. And so we're going to have to part ways. And I was like, I was shattered, man. I did not see that happening because... My MD said to me, you're such a strong woman, why didn't you talk up? And then when I did talk up, I got fired. Which, by the way, they want me to say terminated. It's a big deal for, for East Coast that I say terminated, not fired. I looked it up on Google, it's the same thing. But in, just in respect for the brand, because I'm not sitting here hating anyone, I was terminated. Uh, we said we'd put out a joint statement. Um, I went to my boyfriend's farm in Limpopo. We were sitting there and someone said to me, um, oh, I didn't know you've left East Coast. And I said, what, uh, how did you, where, where did you find that? He said, no, it's on IOL. And I said, no, it's not. Sent me the link. I messaged my lawyer, um, Verdi. She is amazing. And she was like, what, what? And then put out this statement without my knowledge. And I'm sure if you saw the statement, it really kind of, like it did it, it made it, did, made it look, unless I was being sensitive, it made it look like I'd done something really bad. You know, like I'd done something wrong. And she said, you must put out a statement too. And I said, please don't make me. I'm not that person. I don't want to go live and, and do a statement. I can so, and she says, Carrie, you have to, you have to. And so this is, then that was my statement that came out. And then just because I chose to be graceful, I didn't say anything at all about why I left. And every time someone asked me why I left, I just kind of, ah, oh, you know, ah, oh, you know. But then what happened was, um, it was pretty, made pretty clear that in order for me to get any of my contract maybe paid out or whatever, I would need to not tell why I left. And this is why we're here now. Because why does, why does the product have so much power over the people? Why did I protect someone else's brand over mine for the last six weeks? Why is it that I wasn't allowed to say why I left? Why is it such a big deal to say Darren and I didn't get on? Darren, and you keep you know, ask him, man, I know, and Darren, you're probably listening. You know this is us. Darren thinks I am just lame, okay? There's many other words, but again, I'm not trying to try and drag anyone through the mud. I'm just saying I didn't want to be in a space every morning with someone who disliked me, disliked to many degrees. And... You know, when I was going to, to the farm, Mark Pilgrim passed away. And when I was working at KFM, I used to run the desk for Mark for his Top 40 show. And he was one of the nicest, kindest men I'd ever worked with. And he was the first person to say to me, Kerry, you're not just a traffic girl. You can be so much more than that. Like, you're great on air. And he really helped me get my, my radio self-esteem up because it's hard to be a woman in this industry for real. Most industries, I'm sure. And I felt it was such an amazing circle because Mark was there at the beginning of my FM career, my very, very first beginning of my FM career. Mark was there with me. And then when I got terminated, when I got terminated, Mark passed. And that's why I also knew that my days on radio were done because it was the circle and I was seeing it. And I know that I've got a gift and my voice can help or can carry a message because I know that it's not about Carrie Miller. But just like when you go to the ATM, it's your money you're getting out. It's not my money. I'm just like the ATM, you know, <laughs> you put in your code and I'll. So the reason I'm here talking to you is because I wanted to let you know where I went and why I went. And I didn't choose to go. I didn't choose to leave you. I wanted to be there. I left because I couldn't work with Darren anymore. Plain and simple. So I don't know what I'm going to do right now. I've just been kind of waiting it out. Um, 
I don't want to have to leave Durban uh, to go and work on radio again. I don't want to have to leave and go to Joburg or, or Cape Town. I don't know if I could ever work for a corporate again, to be very honest. Uh, but I certainly knew one thing, is that no amount of money I could be offered was worth more than my authenticity. And yeah, I know that this has been hard. And for some of you watching, you may be like, oh my gosh, this is so dramatic. And I get that. But I also wanted just to say, like, I'm so proud of myself because I was getting messages up to this morning from people just saying, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to talk out? Think about future employees, are they, employers. Are they going to want to work with someone like this? Think about you in five years' time. Are you going to be proud of what you've done? And can I tell you, yes, I am so proud. I am so proud that I didn't take money. I'm so proud that I get to tell you what happened. Whether it matters to you or not, I'm just proud that I didn't leave in silence. All right. How did I do? I'll be good. Do you have any questions? So I thought we could carry his couch if you like. Um, we can, oh, hello, hi everyone. <laughs> My housemate, hello. Um, if there are any, any questions or, oh, just by the way, I want to show you something. When I got terminated, I also moved out of my flat. Everything happens at the same time. When that happened, someone that knows, uh, one of my boyfriend's friends was like, do you know someone that could house sit our house for two months? So look where I have been living, guys. Like, are you joking? To tell me I'm not supported. There's the ocean right there. These are the kind of things that made me realize that whatever was going on was being divinely guided. And that I need to, to just kind of trust no matter what. Trust no matter what. Hee. Um, okay, I'm seeing a message come through here. I'm, uh, our Sky and I are still friends. Um, no, I'll tell you honestly, Sky and I are not still friends. It is what it is. I would never expect him to take sides. <laughs> I miss him, I love him. I also get it though. So yeah, we're, it's been a tense relationship. <laughs> All right, um, questions, questions. Where to from here? I don't know. Oh, I still do have an agent. Obviously, guys, I'm not aerial. I don't like lose my voice. I can still work. I can still do my jobs. I'm definitely being pulled more to like a mindfulness space. And I also think because corporates, sometimes I think corporates are missing the sensitivity chip, you know? So they are not seeing humans for humans. They're still seeing us as numbers that make them numbers. So I would love to do some mindfulness with corporates that this reminds you that whether you are at the top, top of the earning or you're the person that opens the door, you know, everyone still has their things. Everyone still has stuff going on and deserves to be respected. And everyone also has their own stress. And whether you're making a rand an hour or a hundred thousand rand an hour, you've got stuff that you need to be able to be mindful of. And I'd love to be called to that. And also in schools, I'd love to do some stuff with schools. Um, the girls specifically, I'm feeling really drawn to the, like women and, and speaking to girls, but um, I just think, I, yeah, I feel like if, if I could share some of this stuff with, with learners, kids, yeah. Um, retreats and yoga and yeah okay so listen this is me in retreats love a retreat but I just I'm not a fan of being told like what time to eat what time to what time to so I'm gonna get there maybe I'll get there gosh I'm so sorry about the sniffing guys all right I think let me check here is there anything else I think we're I mean I think we're good was oh okay Malisha was the boob incident a stunt okay so for those of you who don't know, I had um, breast augmentation with Dr. Paul McGar, and I covered it live on air. So, no, the boobs weren't a stunt. There had happened something with Darren and I just a little bit before that, where there had been something on air where Darren had mentioned my weight or something, and I'd left the studio. That was a stunt gone wrong. The boobs was not a stunt. It's something that I wanted to do for a really long time, but I certainly didn't plan on going live with it. Um, and then when I went to uh, Dr. Magar, he told me how many women don't tell anyone that they're doing this or are ashamed that, and it wasn't just boobs, obviously, guys, whatever. That's why I covered it on air. It wasn't, um, it wasn't a stunt, but I, I just thought, how dare I share everything on air except the things I'm embarrassed about? 
if that makes sense, because then what? What's the point of having the voice if you only share your good things? It's basically then you're a live Instagram feed, only sharing your hottest parts. And that was something I was quite proud of is that I was also, I was okay to share. I mean, do you remember when I was cheated on and he made that WhatsApp group and the boys were like, give him a bells, remember that? That was like real hard, sore stuff for me that I shared. And uh, yeah, so it wasn't just done, no. Um, Darren does believe in something he believes in. Another. Okay, no, let me not read that. Um, oh, okay, so why did they terminate you, not put you on another show? Good question. So how radio works as well is obviously you've got a lineup. And if you want to take a sports analogy or, or whatever else, people are in positions already. So there's already someone from 9 to 12. There's already someone from 12 to 3. There's already someone from 3 to 6. Uh, I did kind of make a, a ridiculous suggestion, which I know wouldn't have fl flied, flown, flew, was why don't you switch me and Stace? Because Stace is powerful as F, guys, and she's strong, and I'm like, Darren would never do that to Stacey. And Jace Poo and I are like a little magic combination also. But that's a weird thing to do, and you can't just change the drive shows. Um, and I really feel like at that point, East Coast thought they were making the right choice. I still think they backed the wrong horse. I really do. I do think they backed the wrong horse. Um, I have purposefully left out exactly the things that were said to me because I don't feel like that. It's in public interest that I left because I felt Darren was bullying me, but it's not in public interest necessarily to tell you exactly what was said to me, but it wasn't nice. And the fact is that my bosses knew exactly what was said to me and they still let me go. And that hurt me a lot. Yeah. All right. Have I thought about joining another station? Okay, so this is the thing is, um, so someone said, yeah, but you know, unga kulume si zulu, why don't you work in sagazwe ni like gagazi noma, and I'm like, that's fine, but gagazi is the same kind of people, um, it's the same umbrella as East Coast, the same company, really. So I don't know if that would fly either. And definitely Cape Town would be an option, but I've got to think about my family here, my sister and her kids, which are basically my kids. Um, my boyfriend plays for the Sharks, and he's here contracted, and he loves playing for the Sharks. And I'm happy here. I really love KZN. It feels, it is my home, and it feels like home. Uh, yeah, okay. Are we good, guys? I don't even know what time is. If I take up too much time, half an hour. Okay, that was good. Are we good? Oh, I'm still teaching a Guru Cat. Yes, Guru Cat is the yoga studio I teach at. It's in Umshanga. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 4.30. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, there's an amazing man by the name of Jim, Jim Quick that I listen to. And I'm oh, so, my gosh, if, the whole time if I've had like snollies, I'll die. Um, he has this beautiful quote. So I'm, I'm not going to get the words exactly right, but he says, every single decision you make is a vote for the kind of person you want to become. Every single decision you make is a vote for the kind of person you want to become. And from speaking up about how I was being treated, to deciding not to speak up about why I left, to being here today, these are all what I think are mindful choices that I'm making so that future me can be an even better version of herself. And I, yeah, I'm really proud of what's happening here. And I just know I'll be supported. And also, just for you, man, like, your, your job is also part of your life. It's your relationship. If you're unhappy, you have two options in a situation you're uncomfortable with. Accept it or change it. And for almost seven years, I accepted my situation. And then I couldn't accept it anymore. And the only thing for me to do was change it. And I hope that if I can leave you with that at least, know this, that you are in charge of your life. No boss is better than you. They have their own things going on. You need to act like you are the king or the queen of your universe because you are. And every single day when you wake up, if you're waking up and going, oh, shit, I've got to go to work. What are you doing? What are you doing? Because on your last day, when you lie on that bed, before you cross over to wherever you think you're going, are you going to be so happy of all those hours you wasted at a place so that you can earn dollar? For what? I promise you, if, I've, if I'm learning anything right now, it's like if you just follow genuinely that niggle, that niggle inside that's speaking so loudly to you, you will be supported. Money is not the king. It comes. I promise you it comes. And I, I, yeah, I just believe that. Anyway, guys, I love you. Thank you for tuning in. 
and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and yeah, see where this goes.